I've been conducting research into nicotine and smoking for over 20 years now. And one of the things I'm constantly struck by is how difficult smokers find it to stop smoking. Whilst nearly 70% of smokers state that they want to quit, even with the use of nicotine replacement therapy, we're seeing long-term quit rates only reaching about 7% of one year. There's then also, of course, the other 30% or so who don't even want to try and stop smoking. So for them, the immediate appeal of, of the cigarette far outweighs the longer term health consequences. And I think this is absolutely staggering when we consider that one in five, one, one in two of all smokers will eventually die as a direct consequence of their smoking. So when I first heard about e-cigarettes in 2009, I was immediately fascinated by them. I started planning research studies. I considered these to be an attractive, lower risk alternative to smoking. They deliver nicotine and they also offer that hand-mouth activity of smoking. And smokers strongly endorse that, the physical sensation of, of smoking. And I say lower risk. I don't mean absolutely risk-free, but in contrast to cigarette smoking, the current research evidence suggests they're much, much safer. So we have to remind ourselves here, I think, about the health consequences of tobacco smoking. About 82,000 people die just in England a year as a direct consequence of, of their smoking. And I say as a consequence of their smoking, not because of their nicotine use, but as a consequence of their smoking. So the key issue for me, therefore, is to reduce smoking by whatever means possible. And the e-cigarette looks like an extremely promising means of achieving this. I think we should therefore allow e-cigarettes to compete with tobacco cigarettes as much as possible and not restrict their availability. Now, that will mean that long-term use of e-cigarettes might result in a certain percentage of the population being permanently addicted to nicotine. I'd argue that as long as this nicotine is delivered relatively safely, i.e. not in the form of tobacco smoking, this shouldn't be considered problematic, given that the harm caused by smoking is dramatically reduced. In an ideal world, of course, we would want every smoker to stop smoking completely and to stop using nicotine as well. But this really is unrealistic. We don't live in an ideal world. People are always going to engage in risky behaviours, and that includes, for some people, taking nicotine. We don't need to stop nicotine use. We do need to stop, or at least to minimise, tobacco smoking. One question that might spring to mind at this point is, well, just how effective are e-cigarettes at helping people to stop smoking? We still don't have a huge amount of data on this, in fact, but we do have a bit of an idea. So starting with a survey of e-cigarette users conducted by my team, of current e-cigarette users, 57% had said that they hadn't smoked for at least a couple of months since they started using the e-cigarette. Looking at the results of randomised controlled trials, two which have recently come out, we're seeing long-term <coughs> complete cessation rates of around 7 to 13%. So equivalent to NRT, perhaps slightly exceeding NRT. But add to that the fact the results from the recent smoking toolkit survey that 27% of smokers who are currently undergoing a quit attempt are using e-cigarettes. So even if they're only as effective as NRT, the fact that they have unprecedented reach overall means they could have a huge effect on public health. And my final point is what about the other end, the so-called gateway argument. So the concern that e-cigarettes are attracting new users particularly young people who would not have otherwise used nicotine, start using the e-cigarette and then get addicted to nicotine and use it as a stepping stone to smoking. Okay, this is always going to be a concern, but there's very little research, so we don't know what percentage of the population this applies to. I'd argue that it's likely to be very small, and I think here we need to consider the likely proportions. So the number of e-cigarette users Using e-cigarettes to quit smoking at the exit end, I think, is likely to be much larger, and there is research evidence to support this, than those using e-cigarettes as an entry to smoking at the other end. So to restate my three key points then, tobacco smoking is the single most preventable cause of death and disease. The priority should therefore be to reduce smoking by whatever method we have available to us. And e-cigarettes offer tremendous potential in this respect. 
And I think we should encourage smokers to try and use them, not to restrict their use. Switching to e-cigarettes might leave some smokers permanently addicted to nicotine. Nicotine itself is relatively safe. So I'd argue that nicotine addiction in, in a percentage of the population is favourable to the death and disease caused by smoking. And my third point relates to the gateway argument that the number of smokers using e-cigarettes as an exit to smoking is likely to dwarf the number who enter smoking at the other end. Thank you.